What I'm going to do now is find top dead center so that I can adjust the timing pointer to be precisely at top dead center. I have a tool here that's made for finding top dead center with the heads off. There's also a tool that you can use to find top dead center with the heads on. Um, it goes through the spark plug hole, but the procedure once you get that tool installed is identical. So the, I'm using the bolt holes where the heads uh, bolt to. And you're not going to get them exactly in the center of the piston because the bolt holes don't line up to allow you to put that right across. But get it as close as you can to the center of the piston. There's this screw in here will stop the piston from moving when it hits it. You don't have to force it, you just need to bring that up to it. Can't turn it. use the wrench on it. Hopefully it doesn't loosen the bolt. Let's go forward first. Hmm. Having trouble turning it. this a little bit. Don't think that's the problem. Okay, it was a top dead center on. The forward stroke and my tool was actually preventing it from moving. So now that we've got that answered, I made it too close. Should leave a little bit of space in between it. So now there's room between the piston and the stop. We're going to turn the engine over until you feel it stop. It's touching that. You notice I've put some tape on the harmonic balancer. Since I tightened this pointer down, it's not going to move. So I'm going to make a mark right at that pointer. That is going in, turning the crank from the front in the clockwise direction. And now I'm going to rotate it the other way until it stops. Now, it doesn't matter for these purposes, whether you're on the compression or the uh, 
exhaust stroke. It just matters where it hits top dead center. So I'm going to mark it where it is that way. So I've got one mark where it stopped going forward, one mark where it stopped going backwards, and top dead center is right in the middle of those. So I'm going to turn it back a little bit. forward a little bit because I was going backwards. Okay. I want to I'm going to bring it all the way around so that I can measure between those two marks and get where the actual top dead center is. The engine is sucking the cellophane down as the pistons go down if they hit. So I'm going to zoom in on the two marks. Uh, the more accurately, and the reason I use the pen rather than like a magic marker is the the line is narrower, so it'll be a little more accurate. Now what I have to do is figure a way to measure halfway between those two because that is top dead center. I don't know that this is going to be a good way because now it bows. So somehow I've got to figure out where, how I can measure that. And I used to have, and I think I still have it, but I think it's up in the garage. A, it's a regular um, tape measure that's made of cloth or plastic and it's you know typically used by tailors and seamstresses to measure and I had used that once before so I'm basically going to improvise today. I'm going to put something along that curve that will bend. Maybe I have, have some rubber bands here that came with some of the things I bought. Uh, if I stretch it and it shrinks, then that won't be accurate. That's not a good idea. I might just have to take the walk up to locate the uh, flexible tape measure. So I found my tape measure. And this is actually probably where the term comes from. Now, I don't like to use the end. You know, it's just too hard to line it up correctly. And I like to use the metric system here. So I'm going to start my measuring at 100, I guess it's millimeters. But it makes the division easy. So I'm going to put my first mark 
on 100. And it's reading 105. Plus four hash marks, so that's basically 54 millimeters between the two. So half of 54 is 27. So if I make my mark. At, in this case, 127, 127. So this would be 100, 110, 120, 130. I'm at 127. Now that mark is halfway between where the piston stopped when I turned it in each direction. So, what I have to do now is remove the piston stop and line that up with my pointer because we don't know how accurately that pointer is set. It's just was set at random more or less. And before I forget to do so, I'm going to pull the cellophane back over that to keep stuff from getting in. And I'm going to turn that till that pointer is on that middle mark there. too far. A little too far again. I'm going to lean on it. I'll get it. Standing right over it, it is right on top of that top dead center mark. Okay, so that means now, without stopping the piston, the piston is actually at top dead center. Now, without moving anything, what we do is we take off the tape. And what we need to do now is set our pointer at zero and not quite there. It's about two degrees off. take and loosen our pointer wrong Allen ranch again
Turn it the wrong way. Loosen. It looks like it has plenty of room to travel in the direction we need it to go. We'll line that mark up with zero. And this balancer is a little bit confusing I would say because it has marks at 0, 10, 20. The line at 0 goes all the way across the balancer but that's not kind of not the issue right here. The issue is the number 0 is printed right next to the 2 degree mark. Actually no that's 4 degrees. These are two, 2 apart. So the number is printed at the 4 degree mark and the 10, 20, 30, etc. are all printed exactly on 10, 20, 30. So just, if you're doing this, make sure you understand the pointers, the numbers, and you'll be able to do this successfully. Like I said, that you can do this with the heads on. You need a different type of piston stop. It goes into the spark plug, but other than that, you know, you put the piston stop in, you turn it one direction, mark it, turn it the other direction, mark it, find the middle of those two, mark it to where, it, and set your pointer to that mark wherever it is. Then take off your tape and zero is the actual top dead center. That's where you need to adjust your pointer to. So Get that good and tight so it doesn't move. And next time I come work on it, I think we're ready for some heads. <clears throat> so this balancer has some other marks on it. I don't know if you can see it here. But this says vertical top dead center. That's vertical, I believe, with the key that's in the um, crankshaft. And then there are also marks like here. That's 90 degrees. There's another one over here. That should be 180. Another one over here is 270. Then you're back to top dead center or 360. Um, that is going to be helpful in adjusting the preload on the valves because what you do is get the lifters on the round part of the cam, not the lobe, not, not the portion. So both, both valves are closed, closed and you bring it up to top dead center for that piston and you set the lash. Now right now I don't know whether the cam is on top dead center or not. We'll determine that when we're doing the adjustment. It could be one turn off because the cam turns once for or yeah once for every two revolutions of the 
crankshaft. So you have to make sure that's right. And then once you get the first one set, you can adjust the valves set to preload on cylinder number one. Then you can go turning it clockwise since that's the way Chevy motors run. You can turn it 90 degrees. That will put the second piston that's in your firing order at top dead center on basically the exhaust stroke. Both valves, I'm sorry, the compression stroke, both valves being closed. So you turn it another 90 degrees after you adjust the number eight and you go to the next cylinder in the firing order, which off of the top of my head, I don't know. Uh, but I have my old manifold here and it's four, three, six, five, seven, two. So you turn it quarter of a turn and you adjust one set of valves each time you turn it a quarter of a turn when you have turned the engine over twice, you will have adjusted all of the valves. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, stay tuned and next time you should see installation of heads, I believe. Thanks for watching.